Okay, uh, I was reading yesterday, uh, people, we got a big chore ahead of us, uh, and I think by, we, I asked you to pray very much for this community revival that uh, Mickey and Renee and some of them trying to get together because I believe it would be very meaningful. I was reading yesterday, there's a record number of churches closing. Our young people are turning away from churches instead of two churches. And it's our job to get them back. And it's not gonna be easy because the world is teaching as we all know, right's wrong and wrong's right. And we've got a heavy chore ahead of us, but we've got all things are possible. And so let's pray very much that this pitch is home, that we can have this revival, and as many churches as possible will get involved, and we can start spreading the gospel like through Graves County like it's never been spread before. And it'll leave here and go to Fulton County, Cracker County, and just keep going. And uh, let, I just ask that you put that on your prayer request list. Anything else? Yeah, Robert, thank you for the number of the Leah Howland. Who?
Good morning. Uh, I want you to pray about uh, this revival. Uh, Bob was talking about. I haven't said anything about it. Uh, Renee has done some leg work on that. We've been praying about that, and uh, we are trying to get a. It's actually a. I want to see a West Kentucky revival. Yeah. All over the state, uh, but we're starting here in Southern Grays County. There's about 25 or 30 churches that we're contacting, and we're going to try to get them on board. We're going to meet, I think it's February 2nd, is that right, Renee? Yes, sir. Uh, with pastors or leaders from each church, and we're going to put our, put our resources together and uh, pick out a location, a central, a neutral location. It won't be at a Methodist, it won't be at a Baptist, it won't be at a Pentecostal. It will be at a, at a neutral location where all can come together. If we have to get a big tent, whatever it takes, we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to have a, a big revival. That's, I think that's what our county needs. So. Yeah. yeah. And so y'all pray about that with me. As we move toward that, uh, that God will move. Uh, I believe that if we'll just be faithful to God, God will answer that prayer. We'll see revival in our land. And if no telling where it can spread, if it starts here, uh, it can spread all over our nation. I pray that it will. All right. Remember these things that Robert mentioned, especially uh, D-Doc. Uh, uh, she passed away Friday morning. And uh, we'll be doing her funeral Tuesday. Visitation is at 10. Uh, funerals at one, I believe that's it. Well, Browns in Wingo, uh, I think that's right. Uh, so uh, be much aware of that. We've got several in the hospital: Dennis Bunch, Michelle Wilson. I think there's somebody else that does three or four that's in the hospital. So we need to remember them uh, as they're hurting today. All right, it's, it's going to be a good day in the Lord. How many of you feel like walking on today? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> well, we'll find out here in a minute. Yeah. All right. Let's proceed though. Oh, don't forget, I, I, meant to mention, I need to mention this. Uh, as you leave today, I, I need two guys, uh, two volunteers, to go back. There's some baby bottles back there in my office. And if you would, uh, somebody go back and get those and be sure everybody gets one of them as they go out uh, to fill those for Hope for Life and the Christian Center uh, and bring them back. Uh, that's how they we support them through these baby bottles. All right, if you would, let's pray. Father, we thank you for loving us. Thank you, God, for moving on our behalf. Lord, I do pray for this revival. Lord, I pray that you move there and open doors, God, that we can. God, that you just, just take care of that, God, and move in our hearts, God. We need revival. Uh, Lord, I pray that you quicken our spirits, God, that we move toward that end. And that not, not just souls be saved, but the churches would be revived. Yes. And be full of your spirit. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do there. Bless this offering now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
thank you, Lord, for this change offering. Lord, I thank you for what it does. God reaches those homes. Lord, I just pray you a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
when you first try to serve the Lord, when you first uh, got a glimpse of who God was and what He could do in your life, and you gave yourself to Christ, and all of a sudden you found yourself facing the greatest obstacle of your life. Uh, is anybody here for me? Sometimes those obstacles, uh, sometimes Satan puts them in your path. Sometimes God puts them in your path. <laughs> but if Satan puts an obstacle in your path, God doesn't intend for you to run from it. He never intended for you to try to go around it. He wants to bring you through it. And in order to get through it, you, you may have to go through some stuff. Uh, anybody here know what I'm talking about? Uh, you, you may have to get down in the muck and the mire. And, and you may have to do some things that you don't think is popular. Uh, you may have to do some things. God may call on you to do some things that people aren't going to like. Uh, it's it just, you know, but are you willing to do what God wants you to do in order to get to the other side? Well, we'll find out. <laughs> Turn with your Bibles to John, uh, Joshua chapter 6. <laughs> Joshua chapter 6. This is a story that most children learn in Bible school. But I believe there's an applicable lesson for the great Christian, any Christian, in this story today. That if we'll just listen to the Word of God, He's got some assignments for us. He, he's got some uh, things that we need to do. Uh, and if we're not willing to do them, we're never going to see the victory that God has for us in our life. And so, stay with me this morning. Uh, I want to, I'll tell you what let's do. I'm going to ask you right now. If you're holding a cell phone in your hand, put it away. Put it away. And listen to the word of God today. Unless you're using it for a Bible. Oh. <laughs> okay. Joshua chapter 6. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, I like that right there. I could stop and preach for about an hour. See? See, I have given unto thine hand, Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus thou shalt do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Father, this morning, God, let us take this story of Joshua and the courage that it must have taken for him to stand up before your people and make this announcement. All oh, people I know, God called him crazy. They ridiculed him, made fun of him. But Lord, he stood on your word. God help us this morning to stand on your word. There's nothing more powerful than your word and your precious son's name. Let us walk with you today, God, like we've never walked before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Notice what he says in that very first verse. It says, Jericho was straightly shut up. Uh, that means that uh, the reason it was shut up was because of the children of God. Uh, they were afraid uh, of the children of God. They had just witnessed what God had done. Here, the, the children of God have been brought out of the wilderness. And uh, in chapters 1 through 4 and 5, uh, 
uh, we see that they're moving and uh, we see the, the great crossing of the Jordan River, a uh, miraculous crossing just like the Red Sea, and, and God has moved them into the promised land. Now, they, they wandered for 40 years, and they finally made it home to where God wanted them to be to start with 40 years ago. And But Moses has died. Moses ain't here no more. God took Moses up on a mountain and showed him the promised land, but he never got to enter. Well, I say that, I'll take that back. He did get to see the promised land, and he got to enter the promised land. But it was over in the New Testament when the, we call it the Mount of Transfiguration, we find that Moses is standing on a mountain in Jerusalem. Uh, so y'all take that for what it's worth. You got to read your Bible. But anyway, Moses has died, and, and God, how many of you know that God buried Moses? That's what the Bible tells us. That's right. Nobody knows where Moses is buried, even today. And, and so he comes down to Joshua, and he tells Joshua, he said, uh, I want you to pick up where Moses left off. I, I need you to lead these people just like Moses did. I, he said, I'll be with you just like I was with Moses. I'll lead you, I'll direct you, I'll do everything you need me to do, God said, if you'll just be faithful and obedient to me. And if he tell us the same thing today, you and I in our lives, if he will lead us and guide us and direct us with this Holy Spirit that he sent down when Jesus went back, if we'll be obedient. That's the key. Yeah. We must be obedient. I find when I preach to congregations, uh, we're all Pretty much disobedient. Right. We ain't none of us doing what we're supposed to do. Come on, come on. Uh, I don't want to get on your toes too bad, but uh, we, we fail in a visible way sometimes yeah. as a church. Uh, and so, anyway, uh, I better I better leave that alone. Y'all can be mad at me. Uh, yeah. We find that uh, Joshua is now taking on the role of the leader of Israel. Now that's a big task. I mean, he, he's leading uh, three million people. Uh, across into the promised land and now they're in the promised land and now they've made it over the Jordan River and God has, has miraculously brought them through the Jordan River and uh, through the parting of the waters and, uh, and all that transpired but now they're in the promised land and immediately they're confronted with a great big obstacle in their path the city of Jericho the city of Jericho was the first city that they had to go. And, and uh, God says, uh, told Joshua, he said, I want you to go. And uh, we're going to, he said, I've given you. He said, see, I've given you Jericho and all the men in it. But then he tells him, but you've got to do what I tell you to do. <laughs> and, and God, sometimes when God puts obstacles in, uh, or the enemy, the en see, the enemy does, likes nothing better than to put obstacles in your path. When you're trying to follow the Lord and you're trying to be a leader, and by the way, if you've been called by God's marvelous grace and you've been filled with the Holy Spirit of God, you are a leader. Because yeah. yeah. the world's looking for somebody to lead. Right. And, and so uh, Joshua is trying to fit the bill. He's trying to be the leader and, and he's confronted with this great big obstacle in his life and he, he don't know what to do. He said, God, what am I going to do? The, the devil has put this great big city right in my path. God, I, I tell you what, God, if we just, we'll find another path, God. We'll, we'll go around Jericho. God said, no, you ain't going around it. He said, I need to teach you some things, who I am. But you, you're going to have to go through Jericho. And the city is straightly shut up. The city, there ain't nobody coming in. There ain't nobody going out because they're afraid of the city. They saw what God did at the Red Sea. They saw what God did at the Jordan River. And they knew that the God of Israel was more powerful than any God that they'd ever served. And they're afraid of the children of God. How many of you know that the world, and really, when, when we get all this flack about the church and coming against Christianity and coming against the Word of God, you know what that really is? They're afraid yeah. of the power of God. Yeah. They know that God is powerful and they're afraid to address it because it might rub off on somebody and they might get a little Jesus in them and they might have to raise their hand and say, thank you, Lord, hallelujah. I'm telling you, they're afraid of the gospel today. Amen. And so, Joshua goes to the Lord and he said, Lord, we've got this big city up here 
And I, I don't know what we're going to do. And God said, well, you're going you're gonna to walk through it. And Joshua said, oh, wait a minute, God. Have you looked up there lately? Did you see them guards on guards up on that wall? Did you see that fortified city? That, that dude's got two walls. It, it, I looked at the, the city of Jericho. The city of Jericho is about a mile around it in circumference. And it does have two walls. It has an inner wall and an outer wall. The inner, the outer wall, the outer wall rather, is about four feet thick and about 12 feet high with a kind of a stone thing of upgrading it there. And then the inner wall, there's about 15 feet space, and then there's an inner wall that's about 12 feet thick and about 20 feet high that has buildings built on the ledge of it. There's houses up there. And so the children of Israel are looking at this city called Jericho. And God says, I've given it to you. And, and uh, I promise I'll, I'll give it to you. But they're looking at it just like me and you look at the obstacles in our life. And we're saying, God, that's too big for us. We ain't never going to make it. That, that, that thing's too, there, there's too many men. There, there's great warriors inside there. And we, we don't have enough strength, God, to go over and press that. And God said, I just told you. Do you see? I've given it to you. And Joshua said, no, we don't see you. We don't see nothing. We don't see ain't nothing changed about that city. It's still fortified. Mm -hmm. And God says, okay, I'll tell you what we do. He said, here's what you're going to do. He said, you're going to go and you're, you're going to uh, walk around that city for six days. And you're going to get the priest and you're going to get the men of valor that's walking with you. And, and you're, you're going you're gonna to walk around that thing. Because uh, uh, see, God says uh, in his word, if, if you and I, if you and I will agree with God and, and come alongside of God and God will walk beside us and lead us and guide us. And he says, there's nothing impossible for God. There's nothing that God can't do. But when your faith is not great enough to see what I've got for you, you can't see those walls falling yet, but I'm going to make them fall. But you've got to be obedient to me first. You've got to walk with me, God said. And the problem is, you and I, our, we don't want to, our faith ain't big enough to walk with God. We want to walk with the world and hold hands with the devil and say, everything's hunky-dory in my life. God said, let go of the world and walk yeah. with me a little while. That's right. Amen. We don't want to walk with God. Come on. We want to hold on to our possessions. We want to hold on to the worldly things that we got oh, in our life. Yeah. We, we want to stay uh, right where we're because we're in our comfort yeah. zone, if you will, where yeah. we are in life. And I don't want God to don't change my life. I'm going to tell you right over here at my little sin party where I'm at. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that's where we're at. That's right. And folks, it won't work. You'll never, you'll never see victory in your life. Uh, I'm talking to people out this morning. Uh, this this church is filled with people that have come out of places uh, that that uh, most people don't even think of. They can't even imagine where these people have been. Uh, and and you come, and God has brought a victory in your life. He brought yeah. you out of deprivation. He brought you out of starvation, and He brought you out of uh, prison and, and jail. Yeah. He brought you out of a lot of places, and and you understand more than most how God works and how big God can be in your life. And then all of a sudden, an obstacle appears in front of you, and we want to run the other way and say, well, I don't know if I can do that. Well, what do you think God was doing six months ago, a year ago in your life, when you was moving with Him? He was with you and bringing victory in your life. You think He's not capable of doing it again? That's right. He is, and He will. Joshua, could you imagine with me? Joshua calls the mighty men of valor. And he calls the priests. He said, boys, go get the ark of the covenant. We've got to have the presence of God with us on this day. And, and he tells them, he said, now here's what we're going to do. And I, I can just see, I can just see these mighty men of valor. And when they come running up to the meeting, oh, Joshua's called the meeting. We fix and take this city. We're ready. We got our swords and our bows and our arrows, and, and they come running to Joshua, and he's fixing to head up to the meeting, and he said, What's on your mind, Joshua? And, and let us go. We got our swords, we got everything, we got our stick. We're gonna go, we're gonna whoop them now, and we're gonna take that city. And Joshua said, Let me honor that. He said, What do you mean? We ready to fight. 
See, some people, some people in Christianity, in their life and walk with God, they'd rather fight than serve God. Come on. We, we find ourselves amongst ourselves, uh, the Baptists, the Methodists, the Pentecostals, we're so busy fighting our own self, we can't even see the battle yeah. in front of us. It's not about us, folks. That's right. It's about the kingdom of God. Yeah, that's right. And so, these mighty men of valor come, and, and they meet with him. And he says, here's what we're going to do, boys. He said, God has told me the plan. And they said, okay, what is it? We'll do it. We're mighty men of valor. We can do anything. Well, what, what are we going to do? And, and are, we gonna, are we going to use some other kind of weapons? Are we going to use some other kind of warfare? Well, what are we going to do, uh, Joshua? He's told you, so you tell him. How many of you know? Now, you mark this down. You may not agree with it, but it's true. God always, always talks to the shepherd yep. before he talks to the sheep. Yeah. You mark that down. Yeah. It's absolutely true. Yeah. He spoke to his shepherd, he spoke to Joshua, and gave him the plan. <laughs> well, I got the plan for you. And you're <laughs> holding it in your lap. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All we got to do is be obedient and follow. So Joshua is trying to calm these great men of power down and said, hold on, boys. Uh, it's not going to be like that. We're not going to go in there and eat that in boys. We're just going to rip their heads off. We're, we're ready to go. No. Joshua said, we can't do that. What do you mean? What, we're men of war. What do, you, what do you want us to do? He said, I want you to shut up. <laughs> what did he say? Yeah. He said, I want you to shut up and we're going to walk around this city six days and you ain't going to say, you know why? You know why God told Joshua to tell the people that was going to march around that city? You know why he told them to shut up? Because he knew that he was going to have a bunch of Methodists and Baptists and Pentecostals that couldn't keep their mouth shut. They were going to murmur and complain about every step of the way going around and around that city. He said, just shut up and walk for me. That's what he said. Amen. Yeah. Yep. Well, that hurt me. <laughs> See, we want to inject our own theology on, into yeah. God's plan. Yeah. Yeah. But God's plan is real simple, folks. He just wants to see victory wrought in your life. He's already won the victory. He just wants you to walk in place with yeah. Him and just take yeah. keep in step with Him and let Him walk beside you. But what you want to do is get ahead of God and go on and gossip and murmur and do all these things ahead of God. And God has to come up and keep you in the high end and say, shut up! Yeah. 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 Instructs his boys, here's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to walk around this city six days. What are we going to do then, Joshua? He said, well, if you can be quiet the first six days, I'll tell you the seventh. Uh -huh. So, the obstacle that Satan has put in front of them there's, there's that great wall that they're looking at, that place called Jericho, and there's armed men of valor on every corner, every outpost on that, that fortified city and all along the wall, and, and they're looking at them every day, and they're counting the Israelites saying, yeah. hey, ain't nothing. Yeah. We got this. The enemy wants nothing more than to destroy your courage and your faith and make you believe that you can't do anything with God. That's, right. That's what he loves to do. Yeah. But Joshua said, boys, here's what we got to do. He said, you're not going to like this. And you're going to think, you're going to think that it's silly. And people are probably going to make fun of you. But you got to stay with me. You can't give up. You've got to stay with me. He said, He said, God has told me the plan. And, and he knows, uh, he, he said, he told me, he's already given us the city. Uh, and, and these men are 
were looking at Joshua and he said, man, you don't look like you've given us nothing. That wall is still there. Those men are still on the wall. They still got their weapons in their hand. And they're counting us. <laughs> and they're, they're probably already ordered the body bags. Because they look and see how many we are. They're going to kill us. And Joshua said, boys, listen. He said, I believe the word yes. of the Lord. Yep. Yeah. I believe in what the yep. Lord tells yes. me. And I, folks, if you're here this morning and you don't understand that in your Christian life, if you can't believe and trust in what God is telling you to do yeah. in your life, yeah. you, you better get on board with God because the enemy will and still destroy you. He'll try to. Yeah, that's right. He'll put obstacles in your life that you can't cross. Yeah. And so, Joshua gets them all ready. And he says, here, we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna walk around. Now, by the way, remember this. I told you it was a mile around the city. Yeah. Now, for the men of valor and the, the, the seven priests that's carrying the ram's horns and the priests that's carrying the Ark of the Covenant, for all of them to march around that city for one mile, mm -hmm. it took them at least one hour. Oh. Now, you think about that. For one hour every day. They marched around that city. They walked for God one hour a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. Oh, See, some of y'all can't even pray three minutes an hour a day, much oh. less an hour. Yeah. And you sure ain't going to walk with God for an hour because that's too much time and you ain't got time to do all that. You got a job to have a family to take care of. You ain't got time to walk with God. Listen to me. If you're not walking with God at least one hour a day, God can't bless you because you're not being obedient to His Word. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, y'all got quiet then, didn't you? Yeah. So Joshua gets the man. And he said, don't y'all say a word. We're going to march around the city, but don't y'all say a word. Not one word can proceed out of your mouth while we're walking. But you got to walk. And so Joshua said, y'all ready? They said, well, yeah. I don't know about this now, Joshua. How am I going to look a mighty man? Just walking around this city. They're going to laugh at me. And Joshua said, Come on. I'll show you. And he just started walking. And then people, no doubt, they're sitting there and they're thinking in their mind, These people are watching me. And I'm supposed to be a warrior. And I'm walking. And don't just look silly. Uh, but he couldn't tell his neighbor. He couldn't tell the guy behind him. He couldn't tell the guy because he's supposed to keep his mouth shut. He couldn't say a word. But he said, boys, just keep on walking. Just keep on walking. It, it's going to be all right. I know God's got a plan. I know he's going to make that plan come. And he said, but you've got to walk with me now. You've you got to stay with me. Don't you give up on me. You stay. We're just walking one time today. So just uh, come on again. Get with me. And, and come on, walk with me. And uh, those mighty men about us said, yeah, we're with you, Joshua. Come on. Uh, I, I know it, it's a chore. I, I know it looks silly. Uh, but this, I've got it. And he brought them back to the camp. And the second day, he said, come on, boys, let's go. We're going to walk again. We're going to go and we're going to get around. And, and he said, Every, uh, you mighty men, you people, you leaders of the church, you need to be walking with me now. You need to come on and get on board and say what God's done. And God is leading us. He's taking us to a journey. He's, uh, he's given us this place. And he needs to see you walking with me. He needs to see you up and moving for God. He needs, if you're not on God's side, you're against God. And God is saying, follow me. Walk with me and come around. what God said. you got to follow Him. you got to be able to walk with Him. you got to want to walk with Him. you got to want to what God wants in your life. In order to see victory in your life, you've got to start following God and start walking with God. If you're not walking with God, listen, there's something wrong in your life. You, you can't get up and walk for Jesus. There's something wrong. How do you want revival in your life if you're not willing to walk for God? Listen to me today. God is giving you victory in your life, but you got to get up and start walking for victory. You've got to start up and get up. But here's what's going to happen, folks. Here's what's going to happen. You keep walking. Don't you stop. The devil is going to try to tell you, you better stop. The world's looking at you. They're going to make fun 
walking. God has got a plan. He knows what's in your life. And that folks, I'm telling you today, you're walking for something, some obstacle in your life today that you want God to take care of and bring you through it. He's got you where He wants you today to bring you through this thing in your life. And you can't get it without walking for Him. I'm telling you, we need to be walking for Jesus every second of the day. Just keep on walking. Every day for six days. Every day for six days. Every day for six days. They was walking for God. And not saying a word. And no doubt in their mind, they're saying this is nothing but silly. This is not. This is ludicrous. Uh, God ain't good. And they're looking at that wall and said, uh, God, if you just knock the brick off that wall or something and show us some kind of evidence of what's going on and, and show us some kind of sign. But you look up at that wall and then glory, you're still standing on the wall. And God said, I, and the people of, of God said, I don't see nothing, God. I don't need nothing changed, God. That obstacle's still there, God. Oh, God, what are we going to do? He said, just keep on walking. Just keep on walking. Don't give up. That obstacle may seem big to you today in your life, but don't you give up. That obstacle can come and God can make a way where there is no way. He can move through that thing yeah. in your life. Yeah. He can bring yeah. you victory in your life yeah. where you yeah. never thought victory was possible in the person's life that you've been praying for. Yeah. God will move yeah. on his yeah. behalf and He'll bring victory to that life. He'll bring salvation to that life. Just keep on walking for the glory of God. Six days they walked around that city and never said a word. <laughs> All this is doing. God expects us to walk for Him. He expects us to live for Him and to tell Him how much we love Him and appreciate what He's doing in our life. And if we want to see victory in our life, and on that sixth day, on that sixth day, He shut them all down. He said, Now, he said, you've done what I've asked you to do. The Lord has told us, if you walk six days around this city, now I'm going to show you the glory of God. But he didn't quit walking. He just kept on. He said, this seventh day, he said, we're going to have to walk one more time. But today is going to be a tough day. Today, it's a mile around this city. We marched one hour, one hour a day for six days. But now, we're going to have to march seven hours straight around this city. We're going to have to walk six hours around this city because... This day we're going to walk around it seven times. Seven hours we're going to have to walk. Don't you give up. You quit. Keep walking. Don't you give up. The wall is beginning to fall. It's ready to come down. We can't see it, but it's ready to come down. Just keep on walking. Believe in God's Word and believe in what God can do. And listen, God is ready to move on your behalf. He's ready to knock the walls of destruction down in your life. That thing that is holding you back, that wall of, of fear has been holding back, it's been holding you back all of your life. God is ready to move and flatten that wall and give you victory. Yeah. But on the seventh day, when they said, now listen, he said on the seventh day, he said, now listen carefully. Here's where I need you to help. He said, listen carefully. On the seventh day, we're going to march seven hours. Mm -hmm. And then the men of said, oh, Lord. One hour was bad. Yeah. Now we're going to march seven hours around this city, and we ain't seen a brick fall off that wall. We ain't seen none of them men move. They still got their weapons. They still ready to kill us. What are you talking about, Joshua? Are you sure you heard God right? on the seventh day. He said, when I get ready and I tell you to shout, he said, you shout with all that you are. And they started out on the seventh day and for six hours they walked around that building and nobody said a word and everybody's thinking in their mind, when's he going to tell us to shout? When's he going to tell us to holler? When's he going to tell us to say amen? When's he going to tell us to say hallelujah? We got victory in Jesus. When's he going to tell us that we can shout in the glory in his name? When's he going to tell us that we can open our mouths for the glory of God? When's he going to show us? I need a brick to fall off that wall. Oh, Lord, I need somebody to die on that wall for me. And folks, I'm telling you, when God, old Joshua got ready after that seventh hour, they went around that city and he said, stop right where you at. And they blew the, he said, now, he said, shout for the glory of God. Victory is yours. Be still and see the salvation of God.
and be obedient to the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. When God gave me this, I thought, man, God, I don't want to walk around the church. God, they're going to think all these people, they're going to have fun with me. Do you know what he talked about? He said, you can't be obedient to me in the church house. I don't yeah. want to be obedient to me on the street. Amen. I don't want to be obedient to me in the church I said, okay, God. I'll do what you tell me. But I don't know if anybody's going to follow me or not. I don't know if anybody will walk with me, God. I know you told me, but they might not hear what I got to say. But you can see what happened. Amen. Everybody yeah. except Rachel. And she was walking in her mind. Yeah. Everybody was walking this morning in the house of God. Why? Because you really want victory in your life. And the only way that you can get that victory in your life is to keep walking with Jesus. Shut up. Quit quick. The, yeah. the, the quickest way to yeah. kill a church is to talk bad about the church. And God said, that's why he said, y'all just shut up and walk. Quit talking about each other. Quit fighting with each other and come in agreement. And, and, and my heart desire is to see this great revival we're going to have for 30 churches to come together in unison. Quit fighting with each other and for the glory of God. I know yeah. God can do it. Yeah. But the question is, as it comes, the question is, are you going to be willing to walk? When he says walk and shut up, are you going to be willing to get up and walk? Oh, I know. It's tempting. It's tempting to kick each other when we're down. And that's the worst thing a Christian can do is kick somebody when they're down. Yeah. Our job is to build people up spiritually, pick them up, and restore them. The joy of their salvation. Oh, too many times, too often. We see somebody fall back into their old habits, their old ways. And we want to just kick them to the curb and say, well, I told you they'd never last. That's what we say. No, I want to get them out of the gutter. Get them back up. Clean them back off. And say, you've got another shot at this. Just keep on walking for the glory of God. And God will honor that. He will for so this morning, I ask you, are you going to listen to the Word of God? Are you going to walk obediently with Him? And quit talking about everybody else. I'm not worried about what T.J. Jakes is doing. I'm not worried about this and Franklin, what he's doing in his church. I'm not worried about those big names. I'm not worried about uh, these boy up here on top of the hill. I'm not worried about Joey Green. I'm, not, I'm worried about what God has got me yeah. doing in my life yeah. and your life as a church. We're a separate entity, and God is moving in this church, and I believe he wants revival to start right here. And I'm ready. I'm ready, folks, because I know that the walls of the, of the enemy has put in in front of me have been flat for a long time. I'm just waiting on God to take me through to the other Amen. side so that I can see yeah. the victory in that life. And you and I will be in this place today. We'll be in the so today, are you going to continue walking? Did it bother you to get up and walk around the church? You said, oh man, people, they're going to think I'm crazy. The world already thinks you're crazy. Just keep walking. Just keep walking and keep smiling. And say, I belong to Jesus. Would you stand with me this morning? Where are you at tonight? Are you willing? Are you willing to walk? Or nobody else will walk? Are you willing to do some things that may seem silly to the world? And even to the rest of the church. Are you willing to get out of your comfort zone? To find victory in your life? Oh, God, don't ask me to God. I know you say, but don't ask me to do nothing. That's where we are most of the time. God, I know I need to, but I really, I, I, I'm just too, I'm too good to ask for I don't want to get out and see your body. I don't want to see uh, those people looking at me, God. God said, you're more worried about those people than you are about me and what I think about you. Oh, listen. I'm afraid 
we get in trouble like that a lot. We worry more about what people think about us than what our Lord thinks about us. Are you willing to give us some things in your life today? To see the victory and God bring you through that thing? He's not going to let you go around. He's going to take you through the middle. And sometimes, folks, it hurts. But God has already made one. He's already given you victory to get to the other side. It was through His precious Son, Jesus Christ. He went to the cross of Calvary, gave His life so that you and I could have victory in our lives. Do you trust Him today? Do you know Him today? Does He live in you today? Oh, I pray that He does. That Holy Spirit must live inside of you. Oh. 
for a favor of him beyond mortal king and I'm sure 